Matt Kemp turned 38 in September this year, which is crazy to say. It doesn't feel like it's been over 11 years since Kemp hit 39 homers and finished second in MVP voting, which he arguably should have won. But don't worry, we'll get there in a bit. It feels like most of the players I talk about, there's one year that stands out above the rest. A defining year, if you will. Matt Kemp had that year in 2011. He led the league with 115 runs scored, 39 homers, 126 RBIs, a 172 OPS plus, and 353 total bases. He was also a threat on the bases, stealing 40. For me, the 172 OPS plus is the most absurd stat of them all, indicating that he was 72% better than league average. Leading your league in five stats is no walk in the park, and if we take a look at what he was able to accomplish in 2011, you would probably think that this is an MVP caliber season. And you would be right for thinking that. He not only made his first career all-star team this year, but won a silver slugger, gold glove, and finished second in MVP voting. He was the all-around superstar talent that the Dodgers had hoped he would be after four promising seasons that showed his potential as an offensive and defensive threat. But back to the MVP conversation, the winner of the NL MVP in 2011 was Ryan Braun. First off, ew, he juiced that year and lied about it and lied about it some more and then blamed everyone else besides himself, including his doctor. Bruh. In any event, the MVP should have been Kemp's to lose, as he posted not only a better war than Braun did at an eight war, without juicing might I add, but the only other major stat that Braun had the advantage over Kemp in were barely better by 11 points in slugging and eight points in OPS, which in baseball terms is minuscule. In November of 2011, the Dodgers wanted to make Matt Kemp the center of their team for the foreseeable future. They made this a reality by signing Kemp to an 8-year, $160 million contract, which was a National League record-breaking contract at the time. His 2011 season was a year to marvel at, for not only the statistical reasons we discussed, but for the possibility of him leading their dynasty for years to come, in the hopes of winning a World Series. Matt Kemp in 2012 was an all-star in limited action, only appearing in 106 games. In August of that season, he injured himself crashing into the outfield wall, attempting to catch a fly ball. He suffered a right knee contusion and luckily avoided a concussion. As the season progressed, more issues arose from his shoulder, which he eventually had surgery on to repair a torn labrum. Originally, it didn't appear obvious that it would require a lengthy time to recover from this injury. 2013 saw Kemp play in 73 games, his fewest number of games played in, in seven years. The reason for the limited action was attributed to a left shoulder injury. In his first game back from the shoulder injury, he sprained his ankle on a play at the plate where he slid awkwardly into home. The injury snowballed from something that looked like a few weeks of recovery time to a 52 game absence that involved left ankle surgery after the season came to a close. 2014 was a bounce back year for Kemp as he posted a 40% better than league average OPS plus and racked up 38 doubles to go along with a 287 average 25 homers and 89 RBIs. The Dodgers following this season decided it was time to move on from Kemp and traded him along with Tim Federowitz and Cash to the San Diego Padres in exchange for Zach Eflin, Yasmani Grandal, and Joe Weiland. Considering that the Padres were bottom feeders in the season and a half they had him before trading Kemp, this trade definitely favors the Dodgers in retrospect. Grandal gave LA their everyday catcher for four very solid seasons in which he put together a 113 OPS plus and an average of 22 homers a year at the catcher position. From 2015 to 2018, the years Grandal was with LA, they made the postseason in every single one of those years, making the championship series in two and the World Series in the 2018 season. Oddly enough, the other players involved, Eflin and Weiland, played in a combined two games, both of which belonged to Weiland. Eflin was a Dodger for exactly one day before being traded to the Phillies in exchange for Jimmy Rollins. Although keep in mind, this was the tail end of his career and he wasn't the same player he was back in his heyday. The Matt Kemp to the Padres trade seems like it would be extremely unlikely now, knowing how intense the rivalry has become in recent years between LA and San Diego. But regardless of that, Kemp was now on the Padres, a team that was no stranger to trades under their general manager, AJ Preller. Matt Kemp in his first year with the Padres was very effective, tallying his third 100 RBI season of his career with a 109 OPS plus. While it was a big step down from the 140 OPS plus he posted a year prior, it was still promising that he was able to get through his second consecutive season of 150 or more games played in. There was still hope for the Padres that he'd be able to be an effective piece for their ball club for the rest of his eight year contract. But this was not the ending that played out. And to be fair, I did spoil the ending earlier in the video, but for the sake of the video, just pretend you didn't hear that. 
The first half of Matt Kemp's 2016 season was on par with his first season in San Diego, posting a slightly above average OPS plus at 106 and hitting 23 home runs in 100 games. The Padres did not end up keeping Kemp for the remainder of that Albatross contract as he was traded midway through the 2016 season after being destined for last place entering the trade deadline. He was traded on July 30th to the Atlanta Braves in exchange for Hector Oliveira, who didn't end up playing a single game for the Dodgers. After the trade to the Braves was where he found his stroke again, posting a 126 OPS plus and hitting 12 homers to get him to 35 for the season, his second highest total only behind his career year in 2011. Matt Kemp returned to the Braves for the following 2017 season, looking to build off of a very strong second half. And unfortunately for Kemp, that wasn't how things played out, which was starting to become a theme for Matt Kemp's career, having great stretches of dominance and then falling from grace. In 115 games for the year, he posted a 101 OPS+, plus, his lowest total in a full season for his career. The limited amount of games was attributed to the constant hamstring injuries that he battled all season long. At this point in his career, this was by far his lowest point. Even in the injury-plagued 2012 to 2013 stretch, there was still hope for a rebound as the Dodgers seemed to have him in their long-term plans, and his numbers were solid for the most part when he was on the field. After 2017, the Braves decided that they too were done with Matt Kemp and traded him on December 16th, almost three years to the day from when he was traded from the Dodgers to the Padres. Which team acquired him from the Braves? Don't worry, we'll get there. I know for a fact I have said the term full circle moment on this channel at least 100 times, but out of all of those full circle moments, I don't think any of them compare to Matt Kemp's full circle moment. The Dodgers in the offseason leading up to the 2018 season decided to bring back Matt Kemp, as they were in fact the team that acquired Kemp from the Braves in exchange for four players, which seems like a lot. But out of the bunch, Charlie Culberson was the only player to actually make a substantial contribution to the competing Braves, who made the postseason in the 2018 season. Culberson's second and final season in Atlanta before suffering injuries and ending up playing for the Rangers. So how did Matt Kemp react to the news of being traded back to his former team? Quote, I'm just as surprised as you are. Matt Kemp played so well in 2018, it felt like he never left LA. In 146 games, he collected 21 homers, 85 RBIs, a 290 average, 818 OPS, and a 121 OPS+. Plus. While it wasn't exactly his 2011 season, it was a fantastic return to form for Kemp. And the cherry on top is he was elected as a starter to the All-Star Game for the first time since 2012. Wow. Baseball Savant only goes back to 2015 for Matt Kemp, so since I wasn't able to go over his percentile ratings for the 2011 season, I figured I'd go over the difference between his mediocre 2017 season with the Braves and his resurgent season with the Dodgers. The biggest difference between Matt Kemp's 2017 and 2018 seasons, according to Baseball Savant, is the average exit velocity, barrel percentage, and the chase rate. While the chase rate is by no means a great territory according to Baseball Savant's ranking system, it is nonetheless a sign of an adjustment to his offensive game by laying off of pitches outside of the zone. The 2016 and 2017 seasons saw Matt Kemp have a bottom 10% chase rate, so to more than double his percentile highly contributed to his success. His barrel percentage in 2018 was in the top 16% of MLB hitters for hard hit rate. When Matt Kemp was putting the ball in play, he was hitting the ball with authority. While his defense was by no means good, he was able to put up an offensively resurgent season that led the Dodgers to the playoffs for the sixth consecutive season. In the postseason, the Dodgers were able to make it to the World Series, a matchup against the Red Sox. And as you may remember, the Red Sox took home the title that year and won in five games. While Matt Kemp had a great regular season, his postseason was not so great. Kemp went 4 for 23 in that postseason, although he did hit a home run in the World Series. The home run he hit was a solo shot in the second inning of Game 1 off of Red Sox ace Chris Sale which brought the Dodgers within one run of the Red Sox. After being eliminated by the Red Sox, the Dodgers had some decisions to make with their roster. This offseason consisted of one outfielder who was on the market, highly sought after by just about every team that had the financial means in order to sign him. That player was some guy that a few of you may know. Bryce Harper? Does that ring a bell? I'm obviously being facetious, but the Dodgers, if you don't remember, were very interested in obtaining Harper services. In order to sign him, the Dodgers cleared a significant chunk of payroll to increase their chances. They traded Matt Kemp along with Yasiel Puig, Cal Farmer, and Alex Wood in exchange for Homer Bailey and two prospects, Jeter Downs and right-hander Josiah Gray. The latter two players I mentioned were involved in two very well-known trades for Mookie Betts and Trey Turner. Not a bad trade for the Dodgers considering they lost Matt Kemp again. And for the record, Homer Bailey wasn't someone the Dodgers were targeting, by any means. He was never that good, but it was a massive salary dump for the Dodgers in order to free up salary for a potential Harper contract. 
which didn't end up happening as he chose to sign a 13-year deal with the Phillies later that offseason. Now with Matt Kemp on the Reds after an all-star season, many including myself wondered what we should expect from Kemp. Which version of him would be present in 2019? Come to find out, we wouldn't get the true answer to that question, as he only ended up playing 20 games that year for the Reds, and struggled mightily before breaking a rib and getting sent to the injury list on April 23rd, and eventually was released in May. A few weeks after his release, the Mets took a flyer on him, only to release him two months later without getting a single at bat for the Mets. No other team signed Kemp for the remainder of the 2019 season, although before year's end, the Marlins did take a flyer on Kemp. As we all know, 2020 was the shortened season, and the season didn't officially start until July 24th. Before Matt Kemp could get another chance in the majors with the Marlins, they released him in June, a little less than a month before opening day. The string of bad luck just kept continuing for Matt Kemp. Luckily for him, the Rockies were on the lookout for some outfield help and signed him before the season got underway. Kemp, in 43 games, collected 6 homers, 21 RBIs, and put up an 89 OPS+. Matt Kemp saw his average exit velocity plummet to the 6th percentile, and as we mentioned earlier, his exit velocity in his resurgence season was in the 66th percentile. Kemp also saw his whiff rate, barrel rate, and hard hit percentage fall into the poor rating. His max exit velocity and walk percentage were the only two silver linings from the 2020 season. Obviously, it's hard to make a full assessment of this season considering it was only 43 games, but it shows that Matt Kemp was running out of time to prove himself to other teams and to himself that he could provide some offense to an MLB club. After the season, Kemp was granted free agency, and that was the last time we saw Matt Kemp in Major League Baseball. It was a very unceremonious departure with little to no media attention on it. I have always been a Matt Kemp fan, so when no teams gave him another chance, I understood their concerns with his injury history, but I felt that there was also something left in the tank for Matt Kemp. As far as I know, Matt Kemp has made one publicly known attempt to keep playing baseball professionally, but not for the MLB. The Summer Olympics were originally scheduled for 2020, but they were pushed back to 2021, and Matt Kemp was waiting in the wings, looking to make the club for Team USA. Unfortunately, he didn't end up making it, even though there were reports stating that he was in fact going to be on the roster. Kemp was hoping to use the Olympics as a chance to show other teams that he could still contribute to a major league club. Without that chance, his odds of making a comeback were dashed. There has been no news of an official Matt Kemp retirement, and there are no professional baseball stats, neither in the minor leagues nor the major leagues for the 2021 and 2022 seasons. Unfortunately, it seems like it's inevitable that Matt Kemp will retire before getting another crack at the MLB, as he is 38 and has no teams that are flagging him down for his services. Most of the concerns stem from his obvious injury history, but it wouldn't be much of a risk to invite Matt Kemp to a spring training and see if he can rebound, because I believe that someone like Kemp could make a huge difference in any competing team's clubhouse, whether or not he's in the starting nine or not. Let me know in the comments down below if you remember and miss watching Matt Kemp. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.